Long ago, for thousands of years, humans have wandered the Earth believing we were the centre of the universe. Even after the discovery of fellow planets and asteroids, some believed they, along with the Sun, were orbiting Earth and not the other way around. Then in 1543, Nicolaus Copernicus questioned if that were true, wondering aloud for the first time if there was more out there than what the eye could see. In 1610, Galileo Galilei published Sidereus Nencius with observational proof the Earth revolved around the Sun, that satellite moons revolve around their planets, and heliocentrism could finally become an outdated teaching mechanism. Over the 400 plus years since, astronomers and researchers alike have worked hard to answer the question everyone follows up with. If the Earth or Sun are not centres to the universe, then what is? For some, there is no centre of the universe. Rather, the universe is an infinite vessel without borders, a middle or an in-between. We simply are where we are. For others, they believe there is something out there, at least acting as a centre of the universe. A place that affects everything around it to such a degree, we are all slowly but surely being drawn in towards it. In reality, a place technically does exist. And while the Great Attractor may not be the centre of the universe, it certainly warrants a closer look at its highly unique properties that may or may not give reason to the question people have been asking since the beginning of mankind. What is the centre of the universe? What is the Great Attractor? And why is it pulling everything in? It wasn't until the 1970s before astronomers first discovered that our place in the universe is not static and noticed the general movement of the Milky Way. To confirm their findings, researchers conducted a few varying velocity tests and charted their findings compared to pre-established data. The results concluded the entire Milky Way galaxy is gravitating towards the Centaurus constellation at a rate of around 600 kilometers per second. The constellation of Centaurus is one of the biggest constellations across the observable universe, featuring some of the closest and brightest stars to our local solar system. To figure out what could be attracting the entire Milky Way in such a direction, astrophysicists continued their tests and soon discovered the cosmic microwave background and its dipoles, a combination of two electrically or magnetically charged particles of opposite signs which are separated by a very small distance. This was incredibly helpful to the researchers, as they were able to use the cosmic microwave background dipoles to reflect the motion of the Milky Way and the galaxies of the local group. From here they detected a gravitational anomaly that would later be identified in 1986 to be in the centre of the Laniakea supercluster, the cluster containing the Milky Way and 150,000 other galaxies. The supercluster was finally named in September of 2014, 40 years after the Great Attractor was discovered. Until 1973, astronomers alike believed the entire universe was undergoing an equal and uniformed expansion. That is until the Great Attractor showed a major deviation in such predictions. It didn't take the scientific community by storm until 1978 when astrophysicists really put an effort into locating the gravitational anomaly. As previously mentioned, the 1980s saw incredible developments with these endeavours. First, astronomers were able to pinpoint the location of the Great Attractor somewhere between 150 to 250 million light-years away from the Milky Way, also measured as 47 to 49 parsecs. Today, most models predict the location to be closer to the 250 million light-year, 49 parsec estimate. Second, astrophysicists determined the location was pointed in the direction of the specific constellations called Triangular Mastral and Norma. It was during these findings that researchers realised their direct path towards observing the Great Attractor crossed through the Zone of Avoidance, 
the section of the sky covered by the swirling Milky Way luminance. To peer past the obstruction, astronomers used X-ray vision and revealed that the zone of avoidance mostly belongs to objects of the Norma Cluster to which the Norma constellation belongs. The Norma Cluster includes a large portion of thousands of galaxies, ranging from titanic and ancient galaxies to relatively smaller, newer ones. All of these galaxies, warped within the Norma Cluster, are actually colliding with one another, and producing high-intensity radio waves at the same time. As of today, it's believed these actions, discordant to the otherwise consistent expansion of the universe, are caused directly, or indirectly, by the neighbouring Great Attractor. Many people hear about the idea of the Great Attractor, and initially react with much scepticism. It makes sense too, when you consider what was previously mentioned. The universe is expanding, and therefore the superclusters throughout the galaxy should be expanding and moving farther apart from one another as a result. Yet the Laniakea supercluster refuses to do just that, despite not being gravitationally bound. Superclusters, by definition, are constellations of galaxies that are all flowing to a common centre, so in reality, the great attractor anomalies bringing together clusters isn't as surprising as it seems on a surface level. The debate over the mass of the great attractor has only fueled the flames of its enigmatic nature too. In the 1990s, the great attractor was brushed off as an effect of the Malmquist bias which is the inherent effect in astronomy where researchers display a subconscious bias and preference for especially bright objects in the universe, or in the case of the Great Attractor, especially dense and large mass objects. In the 2000s, the fascination with the Great Attractor's mass severely dwindled when X-ray surveyors studying the zone of avoidance noticed the mass where the Great Attractor was supposedly located was delivering readings at only 10% of the original calculator. This led astronomers to believe the Great Attractor was much smaller, yet even more confounding. As of today, it's generally agreed upon in the astrophysical community that the Great Attractor is more of a place than an actual thing, a placeholder for the focal point in our massive chunk of the observable universe. If the Great Attractor is an area rather than a physical cosmic object, then what exactly constitutes the region of space pulling everything together instead of tearing it all apart? The latter half of that equation has already been answered by astrophysicists in the form of theoretical energy called dark energy. Dark energy constitutes an estimated 68% of the total energy in our observable universe as of 2022 and is the leading force in the explanation for the rapid expansion of the cosmos. Dark flow is the proposed opposite form of energy that theoretically could be shrinking the universe in on itself through gravity so strong it outmaneuvers the power of dark energy itself. It's calculated by the peculiar velocity of the galaxy clusters around the Great Attractor and is considered to be a non-random theory of space composition. It is currently unknown if dark flow can be considered a physical entity bearing mass, like its counterpart of dark matter. Some researchers have analysed studies done of the cosmic microwave background, and suggest there really is no statistical data to prove dark flow exists, even in theory. However, a couple of astronomers use the same studies, such as data from the European Space Agency's Planck satellite, to argue that dark flow does fit within theories that revolve around the multiverse, or existence of at least one other universe. There are some calculations that say the activity of dark flow as an anisotropy, also known as a material that undergoes various physical properties in directions different than the laws of physics, is a sign that we are interacting with a universe outside of our own. Of course, these theories are just an extension of the main theory of dark flow itself, but it does lead one to wonder if the Great Attractor is somehow correlated with the multiverse, or another universe with a gravity that behaves differently than ours, slowly pulling everything in our universe towards its own.
The idea of a massive swatch of space, pulling everything and anything together at intense speeds, may sound terrifying at first glance. But the good news is that whatever ends up happening with the Great Attractor, we won't be around to see it. And neither will our ancestors, or our ancestors' ancestors. The fact of the matter remains, that even though we are all moving towards the zone of avoidance, and the mysteries that lay within, dark energy will eventually have the ultimate say. As time moves forward, the amount of dark matter and dark energy will continue to grow. At a certain point, dark energy will be prolific enough to completely rip the normal cluster from its current position and completely wipe out whatever is in the Great Attractor to begin with. When this happens, the smaller clusters that make up the normal cluster will stick around, but dissipate from the main structure and stop moving towards the original location of the Great Attractor. Of course, this is all dependent on the current models of peculiar velocity astrophysicists have to predict such events. It's possible that researchers gain a better understanding of the zone of avoidance with newer studies and identify what is beyond the Milky Way's obstruction. It's also likely newer studies into dark flow will popularise as technology evolves, making predictive models of the Milky Way's movement even more specific and accurate. There's even the possibility that whatever sits in the Great Attractor's region of space is indeed connected to a second universe, and something from that space-time will have an even greater impact on our universe, making our relatively slow yet steady excursion to the normal cluster speed up. No matter what you believe hides within the Great Attractor, the fact remains that the most powerful part of the universe may be the most mysterious a monstrous yet invisible corner of the cosmos that impacts our galaxies and the galaxies beyond without much rhyme or reason. Stay tuned as we discover more about the theoretical centre of the universe, and so much more about space at large. Make sure to subscribe and switch on the notification bell to not miss next week's video.